He was here. I swear to God he was here. He'll be back in a minute. Welcome to the Shut Up and Ride podcast where we, yes, we, all of you assholes out there get to ask questions. Um, no reason to have a podcast without people like you. Uh, I, we mostly interview mountain bikers, free riders, and generally cool people. This guy is quite a treat. Uh, I know a lot of the background of uh, Remington here, RC. Um, if you want to ask him a question, I, I just decided that I'll stop and drop every. Oh, holy shit, here. I'm back. No shit. Just like that. I have a plane flying over my house right now. Just like that. <laughs> wow. You live under an airport? Well, so the airport for Grand Junction is not very far from where I live, and I'm right underneath the flight path. And all of you can probably see the resemblance between me and uh, Remington here. I wanted to name him Winchester, but it's <laughs> decided differently. Um, <laughs> RC, why don't you introduce yourself? All right. And I'll start with uh, whatever I have for my channel intro, which is what's up, thrill seekers, outdoor enthusiasts. Sometimes I go with adventurous. I mix it up between enthusiasts and adventurists. And mountain biking YouTube armchair quarterbacks from the Mount West, the Fruited Plains, and all around the world. I'm RC. And this is the Shut Up and Ride podcast. Wow. How, how is that? I'm going to get a screen grab. I have some very serious questions for you there, young man. Oh, boy. Well, now, before we get to too many questions, the first question I think that we have to ask is, what shirt am I wearing? And that would be the Spartan Rides, the Spartan Rides shirt from, from our boys out there in Phenocia, Arizona. If you're in Phoenix, look those guys up. Um, I will put it in the description. I've never met those guys, but I've watched all their videos. Those guys are mountain bike evangelists for sure. And uh, I would like to meet them someday. Well, I would like to interview them someday. That would be awesome. They, that would be a great interview, by the way. It would. because yeah. I could be... Go ahead. And also real quick, uh, you might ask what kind of hat I have here. And um, it would be the one MTB hat. I hate that. I, I know, right? <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> Justin and his dad, James. Oh, God. That kid is the worst. Just awful. Just, just I terrible. Dodging this podcast. I'm like, I talk to his dad. Um, I don't want to tell his dad that I'm already talking to his mom, but that's <laughs> cool. So l let me ask you this. I'm going I'm to jump right into this. And this is a half hour, and anything past a half hour, uh, RC, is up to you. You know, and I'm into it. And by the way, when this let's get real outdoor gold here. Let's let's break it on bikes. Let's break it on hikes. Let's break, just That's crack exactly this thing open and talk about everything. That's exactly what I want to do because t tell them how many mountains you've climbed in Colorado. So in most cases, if somebody asks me how many 14ers or mountains I've climbed in Colorado, I give them some kind of nebulous response. So they go, yeah, I climbed a couple and a couple, a couple. And so I, one there is in Colorado. <laughs> and Stop so yourself deprecating bullshit. <laughs> and so I say a couple, but I'm going to, I'm coming clean on this podcast right here and only only for one of our favorite asu professors uh, on the internet i will hire anybody. anybody they will hire anybody i got <laughs> on craigslist <laughs> i even thought about going to school at asu but uh i decided to stay in grand junction so i, I love the sun devils great uh great school out there in the I'm get out of this this, this I, I mean climbing every 14 or how many people do you think have done that you know, I I think there's there's it's probably in the thousands, but it's a low thousands. So when I climb 14ers, or when I finish climbing the 14ers, oh, everybody know what a 14er is, by the way. So a 14er is a 14,000 foot mountain, and Colorado has basically 53, and then it has an additional kind of like five other summits 
that are additionally 14,000 feet, but they're not, they don't have enough prominence and separation from the parent peak to be an actual 14er. But still, that summit is a legitimate climb and it's just super, super difficult or it's historically significant. So, a good example of one of those peaks would be like the Maroon Bells. You have Maroon Peak which is the, the parent 14,000 foot peak. And then you have North Maroon, which just doesn't have 300 feet of uh, of regular peak, but I still count that. So I'd say there's 58 summits in Colorado. There's, I think, an additional eight in California. Now I haven't climbed anything in California. There's also Mount Rainier, which is a 14 in Washington. I mean, I, did, did you set out to do that? Was that your goal? Yeah, I got I got into it, and uh, back in two thousand and nine, I just kind of I climbed my first fourteener. The what? How old are you? So I'm actually I'm twenty nine, and so I climbed my first fourteener. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Is your birthday uh, January 29th? It's it's going to be in on October 9th this year. I don't know about next year, but it will be October 9th this year. I'll send your check. No, I mean that—that that is honestly a—that's quite an accomplishment. I mean, when people do marathons or half marathons or Ironman, but to do that—that—that's that, an honest commitment. That—that's that, an amazing thing. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, very seriously, is I've always loved your channel. Um, without RC, I would have not got my start. Um, I looked at it. And what I looked at it for was not just the mountain biking, but RC is an avid fly fisherman as well as I am. Um, coincidence? Probably not. Um, but you do a lot of things. I, I've always wanted to ask you about your channel. Have you ever thought of expanding it past mountain biking? And as we know, if you get out of your lane, your, your, your subscribers kind of mm -hmm. get testy. And I, I couldn't agree more right there that uh, that's been on the, the back of my mind. And honestly, that was original mission of the Outdoor Gold channel. This is why it actually the channel got named Outdoor Gold uh, versus Mountain Biking Gold. And that was because I was planning on just doing everything. I kind of ended up having some accidental success on a really, really long hole in Chilada video. And from there, I kind of... Uh, kept on with the mountain biking scene. I made great uh, connections and relationships with other mountain biking YouTubers, uh, most notably the Crashing Dad. Uh, there's just a long list of great oh. YouTubers. The, I know. And I don't even know who the Crashing Dad is anymore. Does he even crash? That's he, the question. He's your stepbrother. Yeah, uh, you know. And um, by the way, we we created this clip uh, last year which will be used in a video coming up at the beginning of next month. And we will discover who the crashing dad's father is. Oh, I, yeah, I, I do remember that. <laughs> you know what? Because that ended up on my iTunes because when I listened to it, it jumped onto iTunes and I was listening to my car and it came up in my car. I'm like, Oh, Oh yeah. So I'm not giving anything away. But, well, I'm not, I'm, but, but it, it will come. We will reveal who the Crashing Dad's father is uh, on an oncoming episode of Outdoor Gold. And really, the, the reason I made that episode that has yet to be released, uh, it was about Fruit of Fat Tire Fest last year. And this year, it's basically all but canceled. So I'm going to take last year's ride from the Fat Tire Festival and use it for this year uh, where there is no festival. So... Uh, funny how that works, but we're uh, we're going to expand on that with uh, the uh, some legendary. Uh, it's so weird though, because uh, f from a uh, a YouTube, you know, I, I'm just a hobbyist, but I I think that you are so diverse in what you do. Like, tell them about being a fire uh, firefighter, and you know, so. Uh, in a, a previous life I had, I guess, don't touch your face. That's not COVID friendly. Uh, but I wash my hands before I touch my face. Is that cool? Yeah, that, yeah, we're exactly. Pick your nose, uh, touch your ears, uh, show a contemplative face, all that stuff. Um, but 
So my pre I have about four years of wildland fire experience in which I basically walked around and uh, did trail building activities that Shut Up and Ride does on his channel. The the steel chainsaw, the chaps, the earplugs, all that it's stuff. Talking about steel. Is there any other chainsaw to buy? Uh, the only other one that I think is competitive to a steel would be the good old Husky, the Husqvarna. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. That's about it. So it's it's still uh, born in steel chainsaws uh, religiously. Uh, that was kind of my that was my weapon of choice for for battling blazes uh, when water and airplanes and helicopters were not available. Were you ever? In a, uh, but anyway, what, the what? Were you ever in a tight spot? There was, I think. I have to think back in my memory bank. There were a couple hairballs that I was in, and one was a fire outside of Glenwood Springs, Colorado. And if you've never been to Glenwood, it is a great uh, mountain town. Just I've actually caught one of the biggest fish on a fly rod outside of Glenwood Springs. What's your biggest fish? Um, the biggest fish is the biggest fish that I've ever landed was at kind of a it was kind of like a manufactured. Uh, the area called the toilet bowl on the frying pan river outside of Aspen. And these fish just chomp on these shrimp that come out of the bottom of the dam all day. And they get very, very big. Uh, when it, it tends to happen to fish when the food source is plentiful and you don't really do anything. And so I've caught some really big fish out of there. Well, but one of my, my favorite fish that I caught was out of Colorado river um, outside of Glenwood Springs. And, it was just like this perfect mix of the timing of the year, what I was fishing with and just being at the right place at the right time. And I caught this awesome, like hooked jaw German Brown that was like 22 inches. And I was super stoked about it. And then I lost a 30 inch a couple of minutes later. And man, that just eats at me to this day. Cause I've never well, in Colorado. I mean, we're going way off script here. You have the bows, you have cuts. Yep. You got reds? We don't have any. We we don't have any reds. We have kind of as far as like the the trout. We have a lot of stuff in Colorado in terms of in terms of fish. We have largemouth, smallmouth, pike, brownies. We got lots of brownies. I love the brownies. Brownies are my my favorite. Um, we got rainbows, cut bows, uh, all sorts of different species of cutthroat, like including Snake River cutthroat, Colorado you're River cold. cutthroat. Oh, you're you're kind of. You know, with part me and your mom. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this. Let me let me veer into the uh, the mountain biking realm. And 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 by the way, um, in the description is all of RC stuff. This is so well worth. I'm telling you, when I first started doing this, and not that I know anything. Um, a couple of guys that helped me out, Eric from uh, No Front Break, Shane from Crashing Dad for no good reason because I was giving them monstrous shit and they had no idea who I was in RC. And uh, one of the things that you, you need to understand about doing this is this takes real time. And people like RC, you could put out of 10 videos a week, but not willing to do that. So let's kind of get into some of the questions that I've saved for you that are on point. What kind of mountain bikes do you have? So I actually have two mountain bikes and uh, we have a lot of other YouTubers and people in the community that get, give me a hard time about it. And that's because they're both long traveled 27 and a half inch bikes and they both have the same rear travel. And one's an Evil Insurgent and the other is a Yeti SB6. The uh, ultra modern, I haven't really found a need to, to go to something else, but it's just like when you're riding out here in Grand Junction, it's a lot like in, in Matt's case, Phoenix, super gnarly, very chunky, uh, not like goat camp, white tank chunky, but very chunky to say the least. And it always seems like there's something wrong with one bike. So that bike I spend time fixing and then I ride the other bike. And then by the time I get that one bike fixed, the other one goes down. And so it's just this endless rotation of I'm riding one and then ride the other and then ride one and then ride the other. So I own two bikes and man, I really recommend that people uh, do the same thing if they want to ride. White tank video and I, I've been to the white tanks and I, I hope people don't think that you are being disingenuous 
That place is wicked. People have died out there. For, you know, every every year in Phoenix, uh, some knuckleheads go out and they bring water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is about the white tanks and I've ridden there. It is, and I, I remember seeing you in the uh, video, well worth the watch. I should probably post it in the in the uh, description. You look wasted. I pretty much was. I mean, and I was hurting. So, I mean, I ended up hurting the next five days from that. When people think of Phoenix, they think of Saguaro's and the open space and the Arizona Diamondbacks and Sky Harbor Airport and, and the, the Sun Devils and whatnot. But the mountains in Phoenix are real mountains. And this is coming from a mountain climber. And everything about Phoenix Mountains is hard. The rocks are jagged. They're sharp. The plant life is out there to freaking poke you. The wildlife will bite you and you can die from that. And then you take the heat on top of it. Phoenix is a rough place and I miss it greatly. Yeah. Falling in Phoenix is, is a penalty, is a big yeah. penalty. And so like w when I go to the Loam in Oregon, um, it's just like <laughs> problem. You guys are riding on shag carpet. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, the one thing I can't say I've done is kite surfing. It's so good on you, Matt. That is that is bad. A I, right there. I kite surf more than I mountain bike, but and I show that every now and then, and mm -hmm. I get a world of shit. Really? No views. I get thumbs down. You're like, <laughs> you do realize I was on a river the biggest one in the united states that's yep. at 14 miles an hour in a 37 mile an hour wind and my dick is about this <laughs> i'm doing it and this is scary stuff but anyway that's we're talking about you are you a gearhead sorry i was having some internet troubles right there are you a gearhead Oh, I'm I'm a total gearhead, and if you have if I have some kind of feedback problems on my end, just let me know. Um, and the reason why is like every time I get into a new hobby, I love having the latest and greatest gear um, from a performance standpoint. If it sucks, I don't want it. If it's going to perform out on the trail, out on the water, out on the mountain, I want it. Steel chainsaws performance. I love steel chainsaws. Um, Scott fly rods out of Montrose, Colorado. I love Scott fly rods. I, I mean, that's just kind of one of those things where I like gear that is practical and gear that I can use. And it's got to work. It's, it's got to work. Yeah. It's got to work. It's got to work. Um, what's your worst injury on a mountain bike? So my worst injury and it's right, let's go, let's go dose. That's Spanish. I'm actually like, I'm actually reasonably kind of a, a, a pretty healthy person in terms of mountain bikes and that I've never let the carriage get too far out in front of the horse, except this one time. And I was actually riding Captain Ahab out at Moab. And there is so much literature on Captain Ahab. It's not even funny. It's just a super popular trail. Um, it's one that I highly recommend everybody ride, but I was riding it for the first time back in 2017. It's a relatively newer trail uh, versus other trails in Moab. And uh, I got a little cocky on one of the sections and I kind of took a, a beeline drop in terms of instead of taking the standard way, I decided to take a drop and there was a rock poking out. I stuffed my uh, front tire on the drop and just smacked on the uh, ground. Stop, stop. That's nasty. But, and, you know, it was just I was laying there and gasping for knock the wind out of me. And I never went to the hospital. I never went anywhere else on it. But I know I broke a lot of ribs. And I know I did something to my lung uh, in that case as well, because the next two weeks were not very fun. Um, uh, sleeping. Did you have a little cough? Even, even that yep. much? off it's just like mind-blowing i i couldn't find anything funny because if I've, i laughed i've actually been to your your neck of the woods mm -hmm. i wrote uh i'll do some humble bragging no i'll just do some bragging i did the 24 hours of moab twice Ooh. and here's my story this is so weird i went out for the very first time 
And I drove up in my little Honda Elephant, my Element, had my bike, and I met my brother, and we were going to do it together. And so we started, but my deal was it was canceled after eight hours because it was so friggin' cold in October that the tents were filled up with people with hypothermia. Oh. <laughs> but here's the weird part. The weird part is I never drove into Moab. I drove into what is the first one called south of town? The the behind the mountain. It, it's oh, like it would have been like um, LaSalle. It, yeah, it, it's just south, and it was just there was nothing or to Spanish it. Valley. Either way, there was nothing to it. It was a fifteen mile loop, and it was just kind of like. These guys up here are pussies. You guys <laughs> are and and that's so we rode and it was canceled. So the next day my brother took me to Slick Rock. I'm like, holy oh yeah. Yeah. And I like the way that Slick Rock had a uh the practice track. Like we're the serious. Practice. Do the what is it like mile? Just oh, yeah. mile on paint. And so that was nasty let me ask you this and and just to and put on top of it slick rock was kind of like that it was a baptism of fire in mountain biking for me and i think i rode it the first time like back in 2015 and it's steep and it's one of those things where it's really kind of one of those you get into it and then you just keep yeah. on you can't believe you're making these climbs you can't believe how steep some of those descents are and it's just i mean it's fun it's a good i, I can tell you this though like the entry after your You've decided to take your life in your hand. <laughs> Entry alone, it's like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I will tell you this. One of the most beautiful views I've had in my 60 years of rotating around the sun is sitting there with my brother with my legs over a cliff looking at the San Juan River, which is like, oh, oh yeah, goodness gracious. It's just it's, the views in Moab are just they're kind of unbelievable. Wow. Well, here's a weird question for you. Will you ever own an EMTV? So, and this is, this is the outdoor gold portion of the EMTB. I would like to own an EMTB and I probably will someday, but I'm not going to use it for fitness purposes. We just East of grand junction, we have, um, kind of a flat top mountain called the Grand Mesa. And it's going to make some, some waves here with the new Palisade plunge go, going in. But there are some lakes on that Mesa. There are a lot of lakes. There are thousands of lakes on the Grand Mesa. And there are some big cutthroats on those lakes that really? nobody knows about. And that E mountain bike can get you to those lakes. That E mountain bike can get you to a lot of... Uh, new fishing opportunities that you couldn't have before. And I, that's why I really, really want one. It's for fishing. I will be doing that next week on my EMTB on the Deschutes. Oh, really? Nice. Oh, yes, really. I've I've invited you and that asshole Shane <laughs> Oregon like a million times. Oh, oh. Uh, I, I, I need to take you up on that. Are you going to be there in August? I'm leaving. Here's the weird deal. I'm leaving um, Friday morning. I should be there Saturday night, and I should be fishing on Sunday. Oh, yeah. I've told your sister, Shane, so many times. <laughs> like, holy jeez. But it's, it, it, it is what it is. Let me, let me take a break here. Don't forget, this guy – is legit genuine and and that's what draws me to any uh any youtube channel at all is it, genuine is great uh, when i met uh rc a year ago we rode together at somo and we had a we had a blast um it was awesome and i can tell you this is what you get and, and that you can't say that about every YouTube channel at all. Um, so his stuff is in the description. Go ahead and not only subscribe to him, uh, share that 
share that shit. The other thing about uh, RC is that I found find interesting that I can't do is his uh, Instagram is really, as the kids say, popping. I always kind of like to check in because he's always doing a run or climbing a mountain or doing shit like that. All right, here we go. You ready for the next set of questions? All right, let's do it. We're at 25.15. Are you good? It, can you repeat that question? I had some internet blurb. We're at 25 minutes and... Oh, we're doing great right now. We are uh, doing really good. I, I know you have places to be. Um, cake or pie? I got some some more kind of internet uh, issues going on right here. So, Would you rather... Right, one more, let's try it one more time. Cake or pie? Oh, yeah. Cake or pie. That is one of the toughest questions out there. And I'm going to go with pie. I'm a huge pie fan. Right. Something, something about like being from Colorado and having like the, the fruit out here in Palisade. I got to I got to take the fruit and the, of the cake or pie. Yeah, that's oh, we can keep going now. All right. This seems to be one of the more difficult questions on all of this. Uh podcast that has now had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, seventeen. You're the eighteenth person to be interviewed. Holy geez. Nice. That means I've watched a lot of podcasts as well. Wow. <laughs> well I could tell you guys go watch the Joey podcast. It's well worth it. Uh, the Joey's the Joey is great. The Joey is uh, that's Paul the Punter. Um, uh, you'll see RC every now and then. You'll certainly see uh, Chinene and uh, go watch that. that that's worth the uh, subscription as, uh, alone as well. And they're hitting a thousand really quickly. And once they do that, they'll be able to do a lot more stuff. Um, oh, by the way, I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, good, good. You, you won't be the first, nor will you be the last. So I switched bikes, but I wasn't able to take my RC star. Oh, I know. Yeah. And I don't remember why I got an RC star. It was probably giving you mouth to mouth or something like that, <laughs> which was awesome with tongue. Um, <laughs> how do I get another RC star because I want to put it back on my handlebars now? Here's the thing. The Outdoor Gold Star is one of the most prestigious awards. In it all. is. It really is. It really is one of the most prestigious awards in all of mountain biking. And you earned one. I don't remember how you earned one. I had a, um, a documented list of people who earned Outdoor Gold Stars over the last, uh, I think it's been around for two years. And uh, has one. He's up on the screen right now. The, the who has one? Dale. He, um, oh, yeah, yeah, Dale. Now, Dale, I will make a fishing video someday. You watch out. But anyway, um, yeah, he does have one, and he earned it uh, probably with his knowledge of international shipping. And that was very, very impressive because that was the first time I've ever shipped anything internationally. Wow, the biggest brown trout I've ever caught in Ooh. New Zealand. Thank you, Dale. Really? New Zealand? There's, yeah. some big, there's some big boys down in New Zealand. On the Orangapuki River by Greymouth. Austin. Oh man, I have a picture of it, and people think, "Is that a is that a salmon?" Nope, that's a big brownie. Looks like a football. Anyway, so let me ask you this: Do I have to earn another one? No. Once you enter, once you enter the stardom, you're always in the stardom, and so all I have to do is I need to collect your address again, and. Unfortunately, you won't get the original Outdoor Gold Star because those don't exist anymore, um, tragically. Uh, but you get the holographic Outdoor Gold Star, and that's going to be good. That'll enough. be fine. Send it to your mom, and she'll give yeah. it to me. That's perfect. Um, so here's the, here is the tough question. Um, tell me something that you think is true, that you believe, that almost nobody agrees with you. Oh man, I can, I, I've, I've, you know, I spent the entirety of the day thinking of this because I tell you what, it's hard question. It is a hard question. And one of them, and I like to, I like to jolt people with this one. And I, I see this from time to time where people go, hey! 
that's how good it is. I like to tell everybody that YouTube is a business in terms of YouTubers and everything about YouTube, everything on YouTube is a business. And what I mean by that is like, it's just like every, if you, you treat it as a business, uh, everybody kind of gets taken care of when it's all said and done. Um, but that's, that's one of the most controversial things that I've, that, that I've ever said um, on the internet, I think. It, it is, it is. And, and, and somewhat it's enlightening. And at the same time, it's disappointing. Yep. Um, it, it's a lot of work. It, it's a ton of work. Um, I guarantee the uh, dad MTB knows that Justin knows that of, of one MTB. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just about being a great writer. And by the way, get your son to be on this show finally. But that's <laughs> a good answer, though. It's not the greatest answer. Uh, I think the best answer ever was Mr. Tonka. Mr. Tonka, yes. Oh, Joe, man. Joe is awesome. You know what Joe said? What, what did I, Joe say? Well, I, I gave him the questions. I don't, I don't remember if I gave you these questions. I asked him and he just flatly said, oh, flat earth. The earth is <laughs> that is the most Mr. Taka answer yeah. of all time. <laughs> that guy, the dry humor that I dig so much. And, and he, he had me for like 10 seconds like, oh, well, that's <laughs> wow. But Mr. Mr. Taka, his humor is really, really spot on. I mean, he's, he's it good. Is. It is. Selling a joke. Let me ask you these two things. And by the way, this is what my original um, nice. list looks like. <laughs> Just, holy shit. But you know, when I was in college, I had to turn in several papers, and that's what most of them look like whenever I turned them in anyway. I get a lot of papers like that. Um, <laughs> what's the best piece of advice you've received and what you can – what you can do with this question is, is you can use that as a life piece of advice and or a YouTube piece of advice. Oh, man, this is uh, I've the one of the best ones is I worked in uh, the, the oil field a couple years ago. And whenever I was dealing with oil field people and everybody just kind of you just you had all these people and the one thing that you didn't want to do is you didn't want to open your mouth and then have them run you out the front door. Um, because that just wasn't, wasn't in your best interest. And I remember one of the guys said, there's always a good time to shut the blank up. I'm sure everybody at home can figure out the blank part. Um, and you know, uh, and nah. but, wait, okay, we got a timeout. I'll let you take a timeout. No, no, no. I, I'm saying shut the F. That's yeah, a shut the F. And 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 the reason and the reason why it's like and then and, and maybe so much if you're if it's your thing on YouTube about talking and doing all this other stuff, that's your thing, but it doesn't fall into that category. It's just like anytime that I think I'm getting off script and I'm and I'm getting off to the side or something like that, it's like, you know what, RC, it's time to time to zip it real quick because you're gonna blow this whole thing up uh, if you talk anymore. So I've always found that to be a good one. If you're kind of on the 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 speech end and you're doing podcasts, that's not the case. I mean you're trying to get a you're trying to create an opinion, you're trying to uh, have a conversation on a particular issue. But when you're in the oil field and you feel like giving your personal opinion about something, um, that was a lot of times just not saying anything at all was the, the most advantageous thing for me. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever got? Uh, oh, man. What's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, that, 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 that's, that's tough. And I've received a lot of bad advice. Like somebody told me I should lease a car and it's like, wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's like, nah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to lease a car. Um, once in my life, worst decision ever. What worst decision ever? <laughs> I to my fourth wife. Like, that's worst decision ever. <laughs> and I mean, there's all sorts of great bad advice. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into depth at my job, but the people that I work around at my work, they give me advice all the time. And it just seems like it would not, that, that advice that they give me 
uh, isn't exactly very advantageous to um, career or career goals or maintaining employment <laughs> or anything else. All right, let me do this. Hey, out there, we're about 15 seconds ahead of you. And so get your questions out for RC, whatever you want to know. Um, that's a big part of uh, this podcast um, that you're involved with this. So whatever you want to know about RC, um, I talked to him before the it started because he did show up 45 seconds before this started. On time. On time. <laughs> so get your questions <laughs> for RC. And in the meantime, don't forget, in the description, this is well worth it. And I know I say that every time, but uh, and I mean it every time, but this guy is, I wish this guy was a full-time guy with 100,000, quarter million, and th this is a genuine, genuine guy. And the other thing about RC is he's got the chops. He, he does. He's climbed the 14ers. He's done the fishing. He's done the, the mountain biking. And so, oh, here's a great question. Your sister asks, <laughs> boxers or briefs, why did he put uh, commando in there? As a I don't, Yeah, exactly, because um, commando is clearly uh, the favorite way. Um, but if I have to choose between the two, we're going to go with boxers uh, in front of briefs, but not in front of commando. I'm rocking a thong right now. I don't know what he's talking <laughs> about. Um, let me ask you this. And I've got you over time, so thank you, uh, Remy. Um, I appreciate that a lot. What's your favorite word? You know, one of my favorite words is truth. That was that, no, that was kind of deep right there, but um, wow, yeah, you got some splaining to do. I got some splaining to do, and the problem is, I would probably lie to you if I if I got to splaining too much about the truth. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to, when it comes to truth on, on so many different things, it's something that we're always, uh, looking for. Um, and so that's, and, and it's one of the things that we're always trying to explain, uh, from so many different aspects and stuff. And it's like, what's the truth about Yeti bikes? They're awesome. even the truth about the Yeti SB 100. They're super awesome. And there's a really good reason why <laughs> but I, I will tell you the fastest bike i've ever ridden by far is uh i think a yeti sb 4.5 Ooh, just a dancer and did everything and and, and i love my my yeti but uh let, let's go to james's question did you know that was uh justin's dad's name yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I didn't. I had to ask him. Yeah, they'd be like, are you Justin's dad? Yeah, I, I figured <laughs> that shit out, and I'm like, God damn it. And I, I was trying to figure out, how can I find out Justin's dad's name by not sounding, but I am an asshole, so. <laughs> it's just asking, clips or flats? Clips or flats? Okay, so early on when I was mountain biking, I rode clips for a while and there was a point where it was like <clears throat> what I was riding was too difficult for me to stay committed um, because I was just going to end up on the ground every single time. So right now I, I go, I'm flat and I've been flat for the last um, five years, I would say maybe four years. I discovered these extra large flat pedals called Pelly innovations pedals. And on top of uh Underneath some 510 shoes, uh, those are my favorite, currently my favorite pedals because you don't get the arch pain. You can get off the bike whenever you want. It's just I don't feel like the liability is down there. So flats all the way. I would not be opposed to going back to clips at some point, but I need a really good reason to do that, and I haven't found that yet. Ooh, there we go, clips. Now, we, we know how shut up and ride rides and that is yeah, a shit for showing up a year ago on carbon <laughs> shoes that i had owned for like five years like <laughs> that hole <laughs> now your key again is clips no socks that's I the next level socks are for losers 
Uh, Shane asks, ideal girlfriend, boyfriend, maybe both? Or oh, man. Are you going to do the bachelor life forever? So, so, so me, I'm a, I've been a bachelor for, for most of my life, if actually all of my life. And that's because I think at the end of the day, I probably just don't like anybody telling me what to do. You keep, you keep, thinking, <laughs> if you keep thinking that you'd be happy, you, you know? And, and so, and so that, that's my, that's my thought process on it. Uh, I wake up, I go do something and I'm, I'm, I've been pretty content with that. So maybe I'll find a girlfriend to bring along on something someday. Um, but until we reach that point, I have um, three daughters. The what? Three have, daughters. Yeah. They, and three sons. I have two sisters. I have two sisters. Wow. You, you can't do that. That's Kentucky MTV. I know. I know. <laughs> There's my brother. He's Justin's dad. My, I have a, uh, a nephew named Justin. My brother built, not kidding, a rocket of... So my brother is an F-16 former pilot, and he flies uh, for the airlines now, and he built an e-bike that'll go 50 miles an hour. Really? Which he has no business doing. And he's fallen like... Three times in the last <laughs> two weeks, like a knucklehead. And so he just like how how did he how did he start this? Did he just kind of like get a frame design and go from there, or what? Oh, he got a Schwinn piece of shit. Uh, literally, he sent me a picture of him. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and he took it, he stripped it, he got it powder coated, he got it, uh, he got a kit. It is, if you look at it, you're like, that's the dumbest bike. And if you ride it, you're like, it will scare your balls off. <laughs> uh, look at this guy. Who wears CD Carbon Roadie shoes? <laughs> I know exactly who does that. Iron Man guy. That's right. You have the shame of doing an Iron Man the same as me there. Look at that. I was an F-16 crew chief. That's Dang, cool. nice. That's very awesome. Thank you for your service, Mike. Um, so Dale is asking, make one of your bikes a mullet. Would you consider that? Well, I mean, I've been, since I haven't been able to get a haircut in the last, oh, what, five weeks or something, I've, been, I've been considering hair. growing a mullet. My wife cut my hair yesterday. Oh, nice. It was sensual. <laughs> you, you know it, it looks good with that steel hat uh, that you got uh, there it does now if, you, if you're gonna make a mullet mm -hmm. you're like all in you oh got, yeah you got a fork and you gotta get a a hoop in the front so have you ridden a mullet i i have not ridden a i mullet. have not either i i, I don't <laughs> I kind of don't get it, and maybe I don't know what the whole deal is. What's your favorite curse word? You know, I cracked this joke on uh, when I helped uh, hijack Shane's uh, "Shut Up and Ride," and I was really just too lazy to sh send Shane a link because he would have been perfect to, to stick in there, but I forgot, and that's probably because I was on time. Um, but my favorite curse word I like to say is "Dan," and that's because I like fishing under the damn river, you know. I like fish, or you see the damn workers on the damn river, uh, also the damn tourists if you go to the Hoover Dam. So it's uh, one of the most useful uh, words out there in terms of everything that I do. Sometimes the damn mountain is in the way. Now, do you, get a lot of, uh, you must get a lot of tourists in your area. Like, we don't. Like, we don't have to deal with that kind of stuff, but you guys must get a lot of uh, joeys and... Uh, oh, Yes. Like they have no business on uh, the whole enchilada and. Oh, that that's a fact. And I mean, and if I want to go deeper, deeper into the Rockies, when you get to uh, the Aspens and the more of the resort towns in there, there's a lot more money than there are our brains. Now that's, that's not to be said that they're a lot better at making money than I am because in a lot of cases they are, uh, but I'm usually in most cases I'm better at catching fish. Uh, than they are and and they don't like that 
Well, let me ask you this. This is my last question. So before I ask it, uh, what profession, oh, I should say, what profession yeah. haven't you tried yet? Yeah, um, right. You know, the ones you told me before we started, like man whore, that didn't yeah. work. Oh, no, yeah. they did work out for me. But good try. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? You know, man, it, 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 it's it's tough because it's like every profession that I've ever been in, I all I enjoyed. I enjoyed the wildland firefighting. I enjoyed the the oil field work. Why aren't you, why aren't you firefighting now? I, I meant to ask you that. Well, I, I left firefighting at the time, and 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 I went to oil field work. And going from twenty nineteen to fourteen. So I kind of stuck it out within the, in a in a family business uh, in there until kind of a lot of that that stuff went away in the last couple of years. But um, but yeah. So while I'm firefighting, it, it it was it was just super fun, and my feelings wouldn't be hurt if I got into it. But I do like the job uh, that I'm at right now. The people are very interesting in this job. Is this true what Shane's saying on the screen right now? Oh my god. <laughs> And Arrowhead water bottles on top of the whole enchilada with Walmart bikes. Is that true? Oh, it is true. And one of the, actually one of the best bikes I've ever seen on the whole enchilada was a K2 like BMX bike. You see some really, really entertaining and uh, downright interesting bike choices on the whole enchilada. And that's probably just because the trail's so popular. It just kind of it brings. Uh, all these different people and all their different bikes to the whole enchilada. It is, it's a tourist trap trail and uh, you see everything. All right. This is a bad question because he's asking it completely wrong. Uh, Shane, <laughs> Carol Baskin kill her husband. And, and my, my question is not that. My question is, did she kill her husband then feed him to the tigers? Because we all know that bitch, Carol Baskin... <laughs> What do you think happened there? You know, I honestly, uh, I was I was having this conversation with a coworker the other day, and I all but got berated because I hadn't I haven't been watching this on Netflix, and he told me I need to spend uh, the next couple of days watching it, and I have yet to reach that next couple of days. Yeah, I, I heard that on Game of Thrones. I watched a half hour and like, whatever. <laughs> bad. Well, well, and here's the thing when, when it comes to tv and uh youtube uh mountain biking stuff it's just like i barely have time to watch other people's videos and i really 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 want to watch other people's videos so if i have free time i'm watching their videos if i don't have any free time i'm making videos and that's kind of that's where i get like on this kind of i'm trying to balance it out you know I know it's such a weird thing to say because, uh, like, RC and, and I are at the same exact level, and I, RC is going to pass me and just blow by me, a uh, subscriber. But I used to think that was a douchey thing to say, and now I'm just like, it's so difficult to watch. Even your friends, like, like I would like to watch uh, more of Shane or Josh, and I, you have to really, really, really pick and choose. And so, mm -hmm. wow, this is it, a dig. How about the theory that Jeff Lowe is actually Baskin's first husband? <laughs> All right, stop with that bullshit. We're not doing that anymore. Uh, <laughs> Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin, nice work, Shane. He 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 can open the can of worms in the comments and be very uh, successful at it. Yeah, his mom never liked her. So. <laughs> um, all right, let me let me thank RC. Let me thank Remington. Hang out for a second. Don't go away. I'm gonna wrap this up. So thank you for uh, showing up tonight. Don't forget tomorrow. Do, do you know uh, Julio and Manny Chavez? You know, um, I I do. And speaking of outdoor gold star winners, uh, Julio oh. actually was is one of the newest outdoor gold star winners out there. And so he joins the stardom, which includes Shut Up and Ride, uh, the Crashing Dad, uh, Paul the Punter, Biker. He it's a really Van Girl Yuka. This is a really 
an elite and prestigious group. Yeah, those boys are on tomorrow night. I rode with those boys about a year ago. And if you've ever wanted to see a guy jump going uphill, watch Manny and Julio. Those yeah. guys, they go downtown Phoenix because they get bored because they can't be on SOMO. And they start going into uh, parking garages and shit like that. So those and, guys are showing up. I mean, and all I have to say about the Chavez brothers is – they are a very underrated channel. Like they definitely need more subs than they have because they are. It's 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 good. Well, they're in school. They're they're both yeah. studying really difficult stuff. Um, I can tell you this: the only my problem with uh, probably Julio is <laughs> you guys gotta like like look at Shane's logo right there. It's it's iconic. Um, but I got to get those guys to change their damn logo because it's so little. You can't see it. But anyway, I'll give them shit tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> hang out for just a second. And uh, everyone showing up and asking questions. Don't forget, this is one of the best channels. And you'll be able to say, yeah, I knew that guy when. And I, I've been... Uh, Subscribe to that guy for quite a long time. So don't forget, just shut up and ride.